this is the Porsche Cayman GT4. At last, at last, because they've done to the Cayman what they've been doing to the 911 for ages. Porsche has finally given it its all. This is effectively the full Visar GT version of a Cayman. For the first time, a Cayman that has been allowed to make more power than a 911 on sale at the same time. So, let's go from the front backwards. Uh, it's 34 millimetres longer at the front because it needs more cooling for the engine, which I'll come to in a moment. Moving back, front suspension is pure 911 GT3 front suspension. 30 millimetres lower than standard, wider front track. Uh, moving back again, you come to the cabin where an awful lot of weight has been has been has been taken out. There's um, Alcantara everywhere, brilliant steering wheel, six-speed manual gearbox only, no PDK option. Uh, moving back still to what you can probably hear behind me, which is the 3.8 litre engine from the 911 Carrera S. So it's 380 horsepower, 385 metric horses. It's about 45 more than a Cayman GTS, so it's, it's a lot in a car that weighs, I think the dry weight is 12 something, where to sit everything else, it's full of 13, 13, 50 I think. Uh, and then there's the rear suspension, which is not unlimited GT3 obviously, because it's a different suspension setup, but it does have all joints on it, new hub uprights, it's, it's very, very different, as is the whole feel of this car. Porsche talks an awful lot about it being a track car, because there are two suspension settings. The normal is for the Nordschleife, and Sport is for any other modern smooth racetrack. Um, we have one of those nearby, which we're going to go to in a moment. I can tell you this is a sublime road car, the steering's fantastic, the responses are outstanding. It feels urgent because it's got the, the extra urge all the way through the rev range. I mean, it's, it's a terrific road car. Let's go and find out exactly how good it is on a circuit. My suspicion is that it's going to be outstanding, but we'll find out. Right then, you might be able to see in front of me that we're following a car around Portimao circuit. That's not a problem because that's a GT4 and it's driven by Walter Roll, so I think we should be fast enough. What can you change on a Cayman GT4? Because they are going to make this as a race car tweakable, tunable for those who want it to. There's quite a lot of adjustment in the front suspension. The easiest one, and rear suspension as well, sorry. The easiest one are the anti-roll bars that have three settings. Walter likes it in the middle. Walter likes it in the middle, that's fine by me. So what is the rest of this car like? Well, this circuit is so outstanding. Um, very easy to, to get the best from it out here. It revs to soft limiter just under eight. So much more oomph. This is finally a Cayman that has got the sort of power its chassis has always deserved really. You know, on the way out of bends you really can straighten the line. Just on the power alone for the first time. That is a really terrific thing to be able to do in a car with a mid-engine balance and finesse of the Cayman, which has just never been a car that's had the ability to make the most of its of its brilliance before, and it, and it really now does. I've got the full ESC on. I'll turn it off in a minute, but you don't really need to. Because it's been set up by Weissach engineers is just the sort of car that has that balance and its electronics are, are geared for it. So a little touch of understeer on the way out of that bend. But by and large you could corner with the kind of balance you want to. Incredibly neutral. Just pushes on ever so slightly on the way in. But you can keep it nailed in on the brakes and it then understeers not at all. This gearbox is terrific, it's 20mm shorter um, gear selector, but the gearbox is the same as the standard Cayman GTS, as are the gear ratios. GTS can feel a little bit leggy because you have to rev it out, 
but because this 3.8 motor has got so much urge, it really doesn't feel like it's like it's leggy on the road because you've got that bit extra bit of extra torque. But the sensational thing about it is it really does feel like a GT a GT Porsche, which hitherto we've only experienced in a 911, which has which is a phenomenal car, but which has the engine in a place that is, I'm not going to say it compromises it because they're sensational road cars, sensational track and race cars, but what it does mean is that the dynamics are always of a, of a certain kind, you know, they demand a particular driving style. I mean, and rewarding like no other sports car. But as engineers will tell you, the best place to put an engine for a car that spends a lot of time on a circuit is in the middle. And that's where finally this Cayman has been given its all and it is just phenomenal. 65 grand, it's quite a lot for a Porsche Cayman but it is no surprise they're sold. You can't get one in the UK. If you've left it for the announcement, you can't get one. And Porsche is very unapologetic about that. They said you knew it was coming. You should have ordered one years ago. It's a bit harsh, but you know, such is life. But anyway, it's worth every penny of the 65 grand if you are fortunate enough to have ordered one. You've got a cup that is just gonna blow your mind. It is utterly, utterly sensational.